the origin of multicellular life may have just been found in Massachusetts. This is insane and violates every rule we thought about biology. What you're looking at is the first multicellular animal-like structure made from bacteria. It's a multicellular bacteria. There's a kind of bacteria that are called magnetotactic. They have these little inclusions in their bodies of metals that help them orient themselves in space. Certain varieties will form consortiums. That's a multicellular cluster, and until now it was believed that these were just clones. But they're not. They're actually each an individual, and they're metabolically diverse, meaning they're not related. They're doing different work in the cell. They have a division of labor, and the weirdest part, they can't exist alone. They're required to divide as an entire structure. This means that they are essentially an animal. Now in our cells, we have these little organelles, so different cells that do a different job and they're not related to us. Mitochondria were probably another organism entirely until they decided to work with our cells. We have the big three, mitochondria, chloroplasts, and more recently discovered, nitroplasts. Nitroplasts are very likely evolved from what used to be a rhizobia. They're intracellular symbionts that are closely related to pathogens. It seems they started out as a pathogenic species and then became symbionts, and these little guys became an organelle. And we've seen some examples of organisms reducing their genomes as they live parasitically on another organism. It's why a lot of the endosymbiotic theories, so the idea that we had another organism that came in and eventually lost its ability to live independently, was a parasite initially. There's a lot of debate about how multicellular life came about. One of my favorite examples as a hypothesis are social amoebas. They live most of their life as a single cell, but when nutrients are scarce, they come together and form an aggregate. They turn into what is for all the world a slug. Like our little bacterial friends, these guys are also genetically diverse and metabolically diverse. Some of them are involved in locomotion, some of them are involved in different aspects of metabolism, and they walk along a surface until they find a place that has enough nutrients. They'll then go back to forming individuals, or they can make a vegetative structure, a fruiting body, where they reproduce. In fact, since these guys are all individuals, some of them have sacrificed themselves to form a fruiting structure for the good of the organism. I say that in quotes, organism, because they are technically each an individual forming a greater body. This isn't the only way that we could have gotten animals. There's a lot of examples of what appear to be intermediates between single-celled critters and animals. One of my favorite examples is the blue bottle jellyfish. They spend part of their life as an individual, and then they can also get together and form a body plan, and these guys are clones. So this would be more similar to what we think of as animals, where all of you, except for, you know, your organelles, share the same genetic code. My personal opinion as a scientist myself, I think that it's unlikely we had one event that formed an animal body. I think it probably happened multiple times independently. Different animals formed in different ways. We have the blue bottle jellyfish. What if it decided to just not go back to being an individual? Or the social amoebas. What if it stayed in slug form permanently? As for these guys, that's what they did. They came together and then eventually they became a permanent structure that needs each other and can no longer evolve independently. They can no longer reproduce independently. In order for these guys to get organelles and make it from being a prokaryote to a eukaryote, so bacteria versus us, they would need something like a parasite to come in and eventually reduce its genome enough so that it becomes a working member of the body. That's what it takes. That would make them an animal as we traditionally think of them as. Found in freaking salt marshes in Massachusetts for some reason. 